Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Our Life. Last we left off, we just hopped into Derek's ending. So without further ado, let's hop into this. Just realized we loved the man, and now we're going into his house. When you arrived at the ground floor of the skyscraper Derek lived in, he showed you right up. At his front door, Derek finished fished a key from his sweat shorts. He swung the key into a silver loop around his finger and joked about his near disaster from earlier today. He'd run straight out of the house once you texted. He'd already hit the button for the elevator when he realized his apartment was left unlocked. Derek had to bolt back down the hall as the elevator arrived, locked the door, and made it back to the other end before the elevator closed. But he'd made it. You quit that being on such a high floor really came in handy. The elevator had longer way to go. Gave him more time. Derek nodded with a laugh. Welcome to my house. Derek's apartment was a uh, modern but still cozy space completely spotless okay i really love this setup though like he's got the couch facing out the window the kitchen faces into the dining room and even though they're connected they're still separate um that's one of the things i don't like about my house is you basically they're connected they're not separate entities and so sometimes the house just feels too close and crowded so i really like his Ugh. The balcony was wrapped around two walls of the abode through the crystal clear floor. The ceiling windows, you could see the ocean. What do you think? It's looking good already, huh? Too bad I didn't put any of it together. It came furnished. None of this is yours? Nah. I didn't have a lot of important stuff at my old place. Nothing worth bringing all the way over. And who knows how long I'm going to be here. Getting new things didn't sound like a great idea. We'll see what happens long term. It might stay longer than I think. Still, at least for now, I preferred a prefab apartment, is it? It's wonderful. There's real lack of footballs and soccer balls in here. Smart way to handle it. You're lucky to live here. I'm long. There's real lack. You haven't seen my room yet. Touche. Derek cast his gaze over the room like he was meeting a friend. It had made a good impression on you, and that had him standing proud. So... But he cut himself off and focused his attention back on his actual guest. You can have my spare key while you're here. I'll show you your room so you can put this away before we get distracted. That was that was said while Derek lifted up the suitcase he insisted on carrying. You mean so you can put it away. I'm not the one holding it, remember? Right, right I've got it. You were led towards a narrow hall in the side of an apartment and stopped right at the first door on the path and you arrived already. Derek opened the do room for you holding the door until you passed through entire... You entered your temporary bedroom. He followed you inside, tugging the suitcase behind him. The furniture style was a perfect match to the living area. It was easy to see that it had come as a full set. Uh, Derek set the bag up against the corner of the bed and kept it out of the way. Oh, man. Man, it's incredible that you're here, especially now. Poor George and Nick, Nico are both on summer vacation. They're super looking forward to seeing you. Can you believe they're going to be juniors next year? George for college and Nico for high school, obviously. He spoke with an infectious, uh, affectionate enthusiasm. We used to babysit them, and now they're practically scholars. Not to mention the fact that George outgrew me. <laughs> I bet in a couple more years, Nicholas will too. So much for being the big brother. Uh, it was a blow to Derek, but he took it on the chin and snorted in good humor. You'll always be their big brother, no matter how tall they get. George might have more height, but there's no way he can beat you in muscle size. Can't wait to see them. There's still babies in my mind. You snickered along with them. There's still babies in my mind. Conceptually, you knew that they weren't still spending all their days on puzzles and doing whatever Derek did. But that didn't mean that they had stopped being the kids you knew. That it's the same for me, but don't tell them I said that. They'll get grumpy. It was a ponderous thing hearing about other people getting older and progressing in life. Little George and Nicholas had grown up so much, but the same number of years had passed for you, and you were older than them. You were an adult with a business and a place of your own. You had achieved more than you had hoped for. You were doing just as well as you aspired to. Things were going all right so far. I'd ideally keep getting better. It had been tough, and you didn't feel like you'd really accomplished much. Your life was just a mess as far as you were concerned. You didn't know how you felt. It was complicated. Things were going all right. Ideally, you keep getting better. You're doing just as well you hope. You achieve more than we had hoped. You're really matured and braced into hood. Felt like you were still a teenager rather than an adult. I like that one. 
It was hard to imagine when you were a kid, but it came naturally when the time was right. A pause had formed before you realized it. You'd blink and brought your mind back to the present, Derek offered. An understanding smile then spoke to give off a different offer. So? Want to see the rest of my apartment? I'll give you the tour. Yeah, that'd be great. You casually went through the still open bedroom door and Derek shut it behind you. The grand tour of Derek's Sora's locale was started immediately. You got to see the scenic guest bathroom with all the amenities and show the vast end of the hall with a closed door. Anything could have been beyond that point. Your helpful guide informed you that was his bedroom. Isn't it crazy having the master bedroom at the end of the hall? Sometimes I still look down there and think that's got to be my room. <laughs> my mom and dad's room. You're moving up in the world. You and Derek strolled back to the main section to explore the dining area of the kitchen. He described the treasure hidden inside each cupboard and you got to check inside the fridge. It was difficult to pretend that the contents were a part of some tourist adventure experience. Of the one thing there spread out sparsely among the shelves were water bottles, colored sports drinks, a jug of 2% milk, a box of salad greens, and a few containers of something, some kind of packed meals. Derek awkwardly cleared his throat, feeling as if he needed to explain the sight in front of you. Oops. I uh, don't have much in stock right now. I usually eat at my parents' place or get takeout. I'm on vacation, sort of. A working vacation? But I should change that, especially now that there's somebody else here. He swung his arm to the side, closed the fridge, he yanked it back, cracked before it shut. Both the bottle and the door clattered. Oh, do you need water or anything to drink? I've at least got that. Uh, I'll take a water. I'll have some of the sports drink. I like a glass of milk. I'm all right. Sports drink. You got it. Uh, Derek snuck his arm through the opening and pulled out a chilled, bright blue sports drink. The closed fridge. He closed the fridge for real and strained out his stance. He accepted the bottle from his hands. The sightseeing moved back into the living room from there. His fun tidbits there were about which which turned on which light and how to turn on the fan. And that's the last stop. With a little flourish, he pulled open the sliding door and led you out to the balcony. Cool. Cool, we stay inside. Thanks for getting the door. Derek, I, well, don't really like heights, sorry. You smiled with interest. You took a spike back. Cool. Derek gestured once more for the wide open door. After you, you were losing track of how many doors he'd opened for you already. But you walked through the latest one in the sizzling summer air. The view was even more breathtaking than you realized from the living room you could see for miles the sea the sprawling city and the rolling hills beyond that neither of you spoke for a moment derek moved past you and leaned up against the rail he stared into the vast world ahead of him he rested against it too right next to derek rest against it too a little away from derek to stand next to him you stayed back on the edge right next to derek he didn't flinch derek welcomed your presence with ease this was the part i was most into about the apartment whatever place i got i knew i had to have a balcony even a small one. One wouldn't one would have been fine, but this one is amazing. Feeling settled, you slipped a refreshing sports drink Derek had given you. He pinched his shoulders up and set a grin your way. All right. So that's it, the whole place, unless you actually wanted to see inside my room. Suggestions was giving a coy brow raised with a little laugh. I'm good, thanks for the tour. I was looking forward to seeing your room. I would like to see that sometime. No thanks, but it was fun. You shook your head in amusement. Bashley, you cocked you broke eye contact. I would like to see that sometime. Uh, if he hadn't been holding on to something, he might have fallen over. It was such a stunt. But it was in an entirely positive way. He chuckled, flattered. Then maybe later. Derek pushed himself up from the bar to stand at full height. It's such a perfect timing. We're both going to be in town for Father's Day tomorrow. That's right, you you'd be present to spend the holiday in person with the Suarez family. Uh, you'd only ever stopped being with the Suarez for that day because you moved. You used to spend that day celebrating with Mr. Holden until you moved away. You hadn't attended Father's Day events since the first time. Um, yeah, since Derek's Serpentine's invitation to Father's Day that first year, you met him celebrating the holiday with the Suarez family had been a tradition. Mr. Derek, Mr. Suarez, and Miss Suarez and little brothers all welcomed you into their family for the occasion. And genuinely, it continued right up until you no longer lived in Sunset Bird with your moms. It was special to you and them with how busy Derek got sometimes. Those special occasions were 
the first times you saw him in months, but both of you had made time to attend for as long as you could. Then, even after you weren't able to be there in person, you still spent sent a Father's Day message long distance. And you also kept in touch with Mr. Holden by sending cards. You also kept in touch with Mr. Holden by calling. It wasn't the same as being there, though. We called Mr. Holden. Your old neighbor was an important fixture in your life, whether you were across the street from each other or not. You were looking forward to being in town for the occasion, to say the least. Derek spoke up again to elaborate on the plan. It's going to be the usual, just going to my parents' place to hang out. I'm going to give Dad a tie. You don't have to bring anything. He'll be happy enough to see you. Sounds good. Yeah, that's going to be great. I'd rather go than be left behind here. You nodded. Yeah, Father's Day is the whole reason I made sure I could come right now. I didn't even realize I'd be here for that, but all right. Same. I do want to wish Mr. Holden a happy Father's Day too while I'm here, but Derek, would it be all right if I invited Mr. Holden over too? Uh, would your dad mind? You already sent a card out for Mr. Holden before you left. I hope Mr. Holden would have a nice Father's Day. Um, we already sent a card. We thought ahead. It should have arrived right on time, so that was taken care of. He rubbed his hands together eagerly. Phew. Tomorrow is going to be a great day. And look at me inviting you to Father's Day directly like a big boy. Derek uh, was so tickled inside that and out that he scratched his cheeks to let out a rumble chuckle. You certainly are a very big boy now. Thanks. His gaze swept over the city once more. His mind began to wander away from where his body was planted on the balcony. <laughs> Man, it's insane how much time has gone by. It's been, what, 10 years since we first Wait. met? Wait. He whispered the words again in the gravity of a long-lost spell. 10 years. It's been 10 years since the first summer we spent together. Derek's voice de indeed sped up faster and faster. He ran her hand through his short hair, stumbling back from the railing. Wait, oh wait, hold on, hold on. He couldn't face you anywhere. Derek stared hard, nothing but his jock lens. It felt impossible then, but it happened. We actually became adults. Time's up. Finally realized it. You've been waiting for that. A light bulb suddenly went off in your head. You realized what he likely just did too. You waited for him to explain entirely clueless. We were waiting. Took him long enough. You never forgot what 10 years meant. Derek's face darkened, mainly the cheek area. He was full of unease energy that came out of constant shifting in position of his feet. Oh man. That's awkward, huh? I didn't I hadn't really planned this out well as my teenage brain had thought I had. It was true, time was up. You and him were an entire decade older uh, than you were then. And more than that, you had gone from being barely older than children to being adults. Derek had graduated high school and college, had a car, a place of his own, probably had student loans. It was just as he imagined, as 13-year-old, and it was at this point that he intended to complete his vision of growing up them by marrying you. <laughs> you joked about the whole thing, you initiated serious conversation about the deal, you made you nervous, you didn't want things to change, you wanted to be with him, and nothing to do with the deal. You really, really hoped Derek wanted to be with you for reasons other than that deal. <laughs> Uh, what did he think of you, really? He picked you out of everyone as the person he'd marry at 10 years, in 10 years, but it was as a backup. Maybe you were only someone worth settling on, or maybe you meant more. If he hadn't asked you to be his partner, would you have said yes? This roundabout proposition was that your internal back and forth slipped out in your ex it looked concerned enough for Derek to smile reassuringly. Promise. Look, Ari, it's cool. I promise I'm not expecting you to go through for the marriage pact we made when we were still small enough to fit in child rides at the mall. He had read you completely wrong at his attempt to comfort. Didn't answer any of your questions, nagged you, but you couldn't demand more. It, he wanted to be with you, and you alone, for real, he'd ask, hopefully. Uh, 23 is way younger than I imagined. Let's call the whole thing off. We're divorced now? Okay. Now let's push it back to 43 instead. <laughs> uh, you nodded. Agreed. Agreed. Cool, it's over. That's a weight off my shoulders. That might have been done, but it didn't change the way you felt about him. Still, the sun was shining, and you and Derek had Derek by your side. It was a good day. 
Please don't tell my bros about this. 23 is too soon for a marriage backup plan. And it's even earlier for me to end up in a grave from embarrassment. That dis That's disappointing, but alright. Thank Thanks. Derek rolled his shoulders and then stretched his arms. His eyelids drooped, but you could still feel the way he was watching. You doing okay? So, how tired are you after all that traveling? Because if you're up for it, I was thinking we could go see our families today instead of waiting for tomorrow. That idea had you re-energized and ready to hit the road again. The corners of your mouth curled into a grin. I'm definitely not tired enough to pass that up. Awesome. Now leave it to me. I'm going to call my parents to let them know what's up. I know they'll be there. I'll see about getting in touch with George, too. If we're lucky, we might get a full house. His mouth cracked into a fond smile. This will be quick. You won't even miss me. Or maybe you will. I wouldn't mind that. You teasingly shoot him away. I won't be able to if you don't get, if you don't go. Get to it. Right. True. Satisfied, Derek pulled his phone out and brought to his ears. He began to walk away in preparation for the talk. Since he was busy with that, you decided to return to the guest room. You considered freshening up by changing, tapping your fingers on top of the bag. You cycled through the options in your mind, but nothing felt right. Eventually, you settled using the bathroom and splashing some water on your face instead. You crossed the apartment you peeked over at Derek. There was no way that you could know what was being said, but he shot you an exaggerated thumbs up. You took that as a strong sign that all was going well. You threw your fists into the air, mouthing a silent, yes. The way Derek's lips twisted, you could tell that he was trying very hard not to burst into laughter on the phone. It wasn't very long before your visit was properly arranged and the calls were ended and you were leaving the apartment behind. Derek hesitated at the door and tapped at his bottom lip. Uh, he was double checking his mental checklist, but that too was resolved in short order. He both stepped out into the hall and this time he remembered to lock the door before he dashed down the hall. Hopping into his car, you promptly took off. The drive was lively. You spent it taking turns, telling each other new stories about your families and latest personal adventures. Thanks to slow moving traffic, it was 20 minute drive to reach his parents' new place. Derek pulled in and automatically noted how lucky you were that his condo had guest spots. Nodding along, you followed. He enthusiastically showed you the way, Derek knocking solidly but not too loudly on the door. They knew you were coming. It didn't take you by surprise when the door almost immediately pulled open. Mesh Forest joyfully greeted you both. Hi, welcome home. Without a second thought, she wrapped her eldest into her arms. Derek gladly hugged her back with the same vigor. Hey, Mom. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Aerie, too. She ushered you two inside, and you got your first look around the Suarez home. Suarez had moved there a couple years ago, but you'd never gotten to visit until now. It was still just as homey and comfortable as their old apartment. When you traveled further inside, you spotted Mr. Suarez sitting at the kitchen table with a chilled drink. He took a slow, drawn-out sip. And then he placed the cup down and got up to join everyone else. He stood in front of you like you were newly arrived audience, pointed at his wife and attended. <laughs> ah, Mom made me promise to get the door. She wanted to be the one to answer. Mom made me promise not to get the door. She wanted to be the one to answer. Mrs. Suarez was unapologetic and owned up to her actions entirely. She went over her husband and soothingly rubbed his back. Thank you. Thanks for being such a good sport about it. Of course, but I get to have my greeting now. Doing exactly as he promised, Mr. Suarez. Mr. Suarez turned from his wife to you and Derek. The two guests in his home and pushed his glasses up higher on his nose. Hello, kids. I'm happy you came early. I couldn't ask for better visitors. Hi, it's great to see you. It's been too long. You're both looking wonderful. I love the new place. You smiled. It's been too long. You kindly nodded as you spoke. You waved you spoke. Put your hand out to show you spoke. You hugged them. We. Hu I'm a hugger. You have to know this. I am a hugger. A wave... <laughs> A wave of emotion pushed you forward into Miss Suarez's arms. She delightedly squeezed you back and you moved to Mr. Suarez next. He gave you another big hug in return. Agreed, Aerie. Us and the boys missed you having you around. Yes, it's been the same. It hasn't been the same without you. It was easy for you to think of Mr. and Miss Suarez as second set of parents. After all these years, they'd been a part of your life. You knew they'd always be there for you if you asked. Okay. Derek clapped his hands together and you couldn't help but smirk. The, the image reminded you so much of his mom trying to bring order to her breakfast sons. And speaking so? of, so where are the bros? 
is the same as always. You arrived first. It made sense to you that you'd been George there. He had to rearrange his day on the fly to make it, but why wasn't Nico there? Your eyebrows raised in surprise. You did not have to ask for an explanation. This war is gabbed about in intentionally overdramatic tone. <sighs> that is my question each day. Nico is never home with me anymore. Now that school is out, he travels into the city as soon as he gets up and only comes back in the evening for dinner. A mother's gloom over her baby growing up was giving it silver lining by the father. Yes. If he's independent. Maybe. Hmm. He is usually, but Mr. Miss Suarez held her cell phone with her lips curled into a mischievous grin at a wink when she shifted her attention to you. I might have sent a text that you two were coming by. I'm sure that'll get his attention. He'll get his butt back here sooner rather than later for a change. Right. It struck you then by Derek's understanding tone that none of this was new to him. They were explaining Nico's habits for your sake. The whole family was as polite as they were perceptive. Since we've got time, why don't you show Ari the condo? Let's go. Uh, I was about to suggest the same thing. What do you think, Ari? Want to take the tour? I do. Show me everything. Miss Suarez's delight was evident as she endearingly looped her arm through yours and led you directly. Similar to what Derek had done earlier that day, his parents led you through the highlights of their new home. Mr. Suarez proudly listed all the amenities in the complex offered outside as well. Derek leisurely followed along behind the group, loosely listening to facts list as he as a few notes to add here and there. Some time later, a phone interrupted the conversation with a loud ring. Uh oh, sorry, that's me. He partly shifted the phone out of his loose pocket and checked for any important news. He beamed victoriously and let his phone slide back into the depths. Nice. George is here. And with good timing, the tour was complete. Let's go meet Junior. Um, the current group left the hall behind and crowded back into the living room, ready for the party to grow in size. As you got there, you heard a firm and even pace striking knocking of the door. Miss Swarz eagerly shouted over huh. the sound. My turn. All right. Fair is fair. Cheerily, Miss Swarz jaunted off and swung the door wide open, knowing his middle son was on the other side. Oh my! He man slimmed out. Damn. Very square jaw, though. Not what I was expecting, but looks good. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, remember to hit like. That way, I know you're enjoying the content I'm making. Remember to hit subscribe. That way, YouTube brings you back here to see what happens next, and I won't take up any more of your time. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.